This is Ryan Elliott from Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined by matchmaker promoter extraordinaire Al Siesta. Al, it's been a good while. Happy New Year. I haven't spoken to you since. How are you? Happy New Year to you, my friend. I'm very, very well. Thank you. Uh, ready for the new season, you know. For some, new season has already started. Uh, there are shows out there in America. And for us Europeans and Brits, I think it's all going to kick off in March, I believe. Early March. Possibly late February. I've been very well, bro. Thank you. Nice introduction, as usual. <laughs> Look, you've mentioned that the wheels are in motion. Boxing's coming back here next month. Uh, it's been a bit of a quiet January. You did have a very busy end to the year last year. I think you said to me it was 10 shows in four months. Have you at least managed to switch off a little bit after that, that crazy time you had? Man, I managed to switch off. But about three weeks into switching off, I start really missing it again. I wanted the action, I wanted all the movements, all the hustles, all the stresses, all the excitement, you know. I am an artist by nature, I used to be a musician, and there's all artistry, all these stresses like gigging, very similar, I actually drawn a parallel between making the shows and performing on the stage, I think the buzz is very similar. We're going to have know? to get LCS to perform some music on the channel at some point. Let's oh, stick with Boston don't do for that. now. You will really regret that. You will really regret that, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, if it's what the fans want, Al. But look, you put on oh. 10 shows over four months during the, the COVID era. It's a hard time for any promoter to make their way right now. Talk to me a bit about what the main difficulties were in getting shows on so, consistent, so consistently in that time and, and the logistics behind it as well. You know, the reason I chose in Belarus, because for the logistical purposes, I thought Belarus was a perfect place where no one needs the visas. It's still in Europe. It's two and a half hours flight from Gatwick. And um, basically, it's a European country. And I can't say that I had a logistical nightmare. I, I, maybe I was lucky. Maybe I was lucky. But uh, I only had one cancellation and I only had one positive COVID test. You know, so... I'm not sure if I would have been in England, possibly would have had much more nightmares because the 14 days isolation rule, uh, lo uh, lockdown bubbles and things like that. There's, there's bubbles in the hotel, long stay, very financially uh, exhausting, I heard. You know, it's very expensive. And um, I was very glad the way I've done that. So it was pretty straightforward in my opinion so i can't lie to you and say ryan it was a nightmare oh unbelievable no it was very smooth and i was very fortunate i think you know you mentioned there after a few weeks of switching off you were itching to get back to it and get planning for the new year the new boxing schedule what have you got in the works of 2021 al what are you working on at the minute i am working on new cold war seasons of course uh working on more broadcasters uh, expanding my territories for the broadcast Sight, signing more fighters. Uh, next week, I have a very exciting announcement in regards to the quite well-known British fighter that joined CS The Boxing Stable uh, yesterday. So we're preparing the release. So I'm really, really looking forward. So with all this, Zach Chelis, Luther Clays, Jermaine Browns, Luke Watkins, Ryan Martin, we've got one more British guy joining us who has fairly high profile, very nice young talent. And I won't tell you who that is. Watch out for the release. I'm really pleased because I love them from the debut. I, I, I personally was involved in a few of his matches. And I'm delighted to have him on the stable. And, and I think I can do a really good job with him. You know? That's one to keep an eye on for next week. Al, have you got any more hints for the people that will be wondering who it is? Yeah, he's a southpaw. That's all. That's as much as that. Well, we'll leave that one there. No. Mm -hmm. Look, you mentioned Zach Chelly there. Let's start with him. Uh, he won Ultimate Boxer the back end of last year. Looked very impressive doing so as well. What's his plans for 2021? Where do you want to take him this year, Al? I think Zach deserves slightly deeper waters. We'll be looking at uh, original titles, one of four. Uh, talking WBC, WBA, IBF and WBO. Uh, by the way, the sequence of me pronouncing and announcing those governing body doesn't represent their credibility or power. It's just, I can, I can do other way around. WBO, IBF, WBA, and WBC. And I'm very friendly with all of them, and I love what they're doing. And I think the guys who are working with CS The Boxing in this season, this year, 2021, truly deserve some exposure. And we will try to win some titles and progress in ratings. You know? So that's the plan for Zach Shelley inclusively. 
what, what's the latest with Luther Clay L? We saw him in a great fight with Chris Congo. He ultimately fell short, but it was a good fight. Gave a good account of himself as well on the big stage. When can we expect to see Luther back? Luther Clay is in South Africa at the moment, uh, making some financial investments and doing, uh, him and his parents are building a hotel on the land they purchased there. And uh, he's enjoying his life. He's on the runs in terms of a positive sense of that word. I mean, running um, their miles, not running from someone. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's in training and saying that possibly in March he will be ready to go. So he's temporarily out of the UK uh, in the better weather and the better surroundings. Luther was born in South Africa, so it's all natural for him there. He came here when he was, I believe, six or seven years of age. And he goes back to the roots. Maybe that he will find salvation and inspiration from being there. And uh, I put him in touch with a very, very credible trainer in South Africa. So Luther is okay. He'll be back before the summer, hopefully in 21, 21 season. So, and that comes for the rest of the fighters. as we're talking, Luke Watkins and Ryan Martin and so on. For everyone is carrying slight old injuries and the healing and getting back in the groove and training so as you know with this lockdown is still not that straightforward the some gyms are closed so you can't do swimming for example it's in sea uh, fully so people using back of, backs of their garden or whatever they've got in their professional boxing gyms so when we fully get in, in the group i believe in mid-february to end of february that's where all the race and all the hustle will begin yeah now al i just wanted to talk about a few of the fights we have had announced the matchroom schedule of course came out last yeah. week Avanesian Kelly, it looks like we're finally going to get it at the, the millionth time of asking. Uh, February 20th, I believe it is. How do you see that fight playing out, Al? Do you have a clear favourite in your mind? Um, I was edging towards David previously. But with this gap and postponements and cancellations, I think it does really equalise the slayer chances. I kind of was analysing Josh Kelly's situation and his levels Let's don't forget he gave Rave Robinson, even if he's lost the fight and he got a draw, he gave a close enough encounter for people to go split decisions, correct? Ray Robinson is an arguably gatekeeper of a very high international level, world level, world class. So proving that Josh Kelly is on the par. David Avanisan, it's similar, but David is a bit of a fight of the mood. If he is on the roll, he can drive through you, literally drive through you. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. But because the momentum been lost, I don't know how, how up for it he will be. I know Josh will be because I think he had enough rest. He married. I think he had a kid. And he's done all his family's duties. Now he's had fully, his head is fully on it. Where David as well had little baby, I believe. And um, you know what? It's funny. It's, all, it's such a 50-50, even by the story that gone behind the scenes. Like, I can't really pick a favourite because you know it's a very ungrateful thing to do if you're involved in professional boxing, you know? Now, Al, the last time I spoke to you, uh, the Povetk and White rematch was announced too. That also yeah. got pushed back. It's now March 6th, I believe it is. Last time we spoke, you were very vocal about the fact you expect a repeat result. Has anything you've seen in the last two months changed your mind? You know, with Povetk and having COVID, the fight being delayed, does that change anything in your head? Sasha had a very, very heavy COVID, much heavier than many people think. I know he had oxygen. He didn't go to EVL stage with the life support, but he needed oxygen. I believe he lost about 17 kilos, so he was a cruiserweight when he came out of hospital. He was at the cruiserweight division. Now he is much better. He seems to be picking up the assets in terms of energy, weight, the strength, the power. I speak to the team regularly, but that does equalize its chances of Dillian also because Dillian was rushing into it and on the stroll that Pavetkin had of confidence, the rise of confidence like he had from that knockout, I'm telling you he would have done the job within four rounds in the second fight again. All sort of barrage of fighters would have gone at Dillian all sort of combinations and vocabulary that Pavetkin has as an ex-Olympic champion. He was very hesitant because Brits are very good in their scary hype machine. 
They're very good. Matchroom, oh, such a powerful. Eddie is so convincing, saying Pavetkin is too small for Dillian, and Matchroom machine and big money behind it. And it could overwhelm you, even solid warrior like Pavetkin. But now Pavetkin seen the light of date with a powerful knockout. He becomes to the Russian savage, which I know that stage, what that is. So, and now suddenly COVID, Dillian had more time to recover. It really does edges it closer, even in my so-called bantery, arrogant opinion, patriotic Russian thing. Even I now think that Dillian has more chance, but I still think Pavetkin will find something that special that will put, that, put the real closure to that, to that duo fights, I think. I do believe. I still fancy Pavetkin to do the business, you know? Because um, all I've been saying now is all about psyche that Pavetkin is experienced, but I haven't touched up on dealings. And we all know that man went through ups and downs after the knockout. The knockout became the best knockout of 2020. I mean, last thing you want to see, getting yourself banged out everywhere on the internet and stuff. Some people draw the inspiration from it. Some people, but I think, but I think Dillian will be okay. We, one thing for sure, there's a very, very exciting pay-per-view fight. Big news yesterday, uh, Canelo Alvarez signed a two-fight deal with Matrum. He is going to be fighting Abney Yildirim, first of all, in Miami in February, Al. Beyond that, we're looking at that Cinco de Mayo date, wondering who it's going to be. Talk of there being Billy Joe Saunders. Who would you want to see Canelo face on Cinco de Mayo if you had your choice? Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Eddie Hearn and Matrum. Beautiful, really nice. I mean, the company, I mean, let's face it, Matrum is the strongest the best promoter, I mean, Eddie is the best and strongest promoter in the world. Right now, and been for many years, in my opinion, I always admire his work and the companies. And I learned a lot myself. I know he's a much younger man, but I learned a lot. And um, you dream is just a tick over, really, in my opinion. And who I would like to look. This is, let me, my personal expansion on this will be like this. The opponents that Canelo is getting are not the people who will beat him. And this is the cleverness of the marketing machine behind Canelo team. I tell you the people who could really cause trouble to Canelo, if you're interested. David Benavides. Dmitry Bivol. I'm not even touching Arthur Biturbi if he will just knock him out. And it's the wrong weight category. Yeah? Possibly Demetrius Andre. And there's a slim, slim chance that Billy Joe Saunders has. Just because he's very awkward, southpaw, and very intelligent. The only way you can beat Canelo is by intellect. Because the guy has an impeccable defense. He can withhold any storm that you're going to put up on him. And um, I think these are the people that I said could probably do uh, currently something to Canelo. There are some more new up-and-coming prospects, which are not worth of calling out. But I know a couple that are really, really amazing. And will give Canelo right now an incredible test. I mean, one of them, Fedor Cherkashen, that uh, signed to Andrzej Wasilewski in Poland. Incredible middleweight, super middleweight. Unbelievable guy. Unbelievable. I mean, I know him sparring from Camille Sherimeta and with other very, very serious fighters and Callum Smith and people like that. And all of them said, mate, that is a new world champion, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. The man he dealt with everyone, and I see them... Watch out for that name, Fedor Cherkashin. is a great, great prospect. I had the opportunity to sign him first, but I didn't have anything to offer about two years ago. And, but I really regret not to find the finance and not to put my foot down and not to lock that guy down. You will see a lot of him. He was uh, 16 years of age, a world uh, multi-champion in Thailand. A first white man doing that. So anyway... Uh, Billy Joe Saunders, I'd like to see against Canelo on Cinco de Mayo. I mean, or Dmitry Bivol, but they're never going to... Canelo never will take Bivol, never. And, uh, Eddie Reynoso knows 
all about levels. So they will never put Canelo in the fight, which is 50-50 at the moment, because the financial stroll is too sweet to miss out on. So it's all will be 60-40. And I do believe Billy Joe Saunders, in their opinion, is 70-30. So Billy goes there as an underdog, like he did with David Lemieux. And uh, Canelo, not David Lemieux, by, by, by all stretch of imagination, by the way. No, I'm not comparing them. But David Lemieux can really bang. And Canelo uh, and Billy Joe Saunders made them look pedestrian. So, I mean, there are people who can beat Canelo, and those won't be involved. And there are people who could give Canelo a really good fight, and they would match him, and those are the people you're going to see. Because Canelo now is with Matchroom, so on Cinco de Mayo will... Right, let me quickly explain you. Yield Dream is a mandatory. Um, I'm at owner, or Ahmed Auner, how to pronounce it properly in Turkish. The, the manager of uh, Yield Dream is a very close friend with WBC, very respectable manager, um, good friend of mine, is a crazy man. I love him for that. And... You dream been lingering in that position for a very long time. And I think he got, he got his chance. And it's a good fight for Canelo. Great payday for you dream and the team. Great uh, takeover fight for Canelo to keep him busy. And then Cinco de Mayo, we'll see Billy Joe Saunders probably. Or maybe even Demetrius Andre. Something like this, we'll see. Something like this. Just a couple more for you, Al, from me. Uh, reports came out that the WBO want to sanction Fury Joshua. Uh, they want to have their belt on the line uh, to make it an undisputed fight. Team Usyk have made their position clear the whole way through. They said they're not interested in anything that isn't a world title fight. There's been talk of Usyk Joyce for an interim title. You know Usyk's team. Do you see them settling for anything less than a shot of that WBO world title? I know Usyk teams very well, and we had lots of discussions. Um, look, we all have to get on in this business if we want to achieve anything. And I am kind of embarrassed for being a part of this big, big cartel. And I always said in the past, I am a part of the big cartel. And we all need to play by the games and play the game and abide by the internal rules. Do I think it's fair that Yusik has to fight for the interim? Because people think that Joshua and Fury is the biggest fight out there. First of all, I do think as well that way. But that doesn't mean that you have to bend the rule just because you want to see that fight. You understand, yeah? So I can, if, we, if we've got time, very quickly, I'll give you the real landscape behind this. Number one, Yusuf Joshua is an extremely dangerous fight for Joshua. As I was adamant and vocal about Pavetkin, Dillian White, I've got the same confidence that Alexander Yusik is beating Anthony Joshua at any time of day. He is better fighter in every aspect. I tell you more, he's so intelligent and so solid inside that Anthony will crumble under his psychological pressure. Do you know when you've got someone superior intellectually to you and physically in life, Somehow your life defenses send you really weird body kind of to your body and your mind, very kind of weird signals and you don't, feel, don't quite feel yourself comfortable. Do you understand what I'm saying? That happens in the ring multiplied by 100. Animals, when they see each other, one of them goes tail bending because this is the way nature works. And Yusik is the kind of guy who can make you bend your tail. I'm telling you. So... So they know that Usyk is the... Look, would Joshua Usyk be a pay-per-view? 100%. Would it generate massive revenue? Absolutely. Would it be a brilliant, brilliant learning fight and massive build-up to uh, AJ against Fury in the summer? 100%. So why don't they take it? Too dangerous. They got to that stage where Fury got his WBC title, where AJ defended against old and useless Kubrat Pulev, and now they can make this fight, and they just, by all means possible and necessary, they will try to gain. And I'm a bit kind of disheartened that WBO gave in. That's not to have a go, oh, look at that siesta dick. 
saying that, oh, he would have tried to do it himself. Yes, but we all know what happened. Do I want to see Joshua, Joshua Fury to be an uh, undisputed title fight? 100%. Will I buy it? Absolutely. Do I think you should go treat it unfairly? Absolutely. You know? And interim, yes. It's a good idea. And he is beating Joe Joyce, by the way, for those who's doubting. But the problem is, will he get that fight against Joshua or Fury? After. Where is guarantee that Tyson Fury, by the way, in my opinion, is beating Joshua comfortably? And him beating Joshua, then he says, I had it all. I was an undisputed world champion. Hooray! Oh, singing songs saying, that's it, I'm gone. Do you agree? He can do that. He can do that. So then Yusik will be deprived from the opportunity, you know? But ultimately, I don't think Sasha Yusik um, would be a favorite and going to fight with Fury. But he's definitely, in my books, will be favorite in, go, in, in the books in going to the fight with uh, Joshua. Definitely. So that is the situation. So Joyce Yusik, great fight. I'd love to see it, of course. And interim is the solution. But that is the solution. This is a cramps from the table of the WBO to Yusik. And I mean, Joyce is overwhelmed. From joy, from joy, really, his team. They suddenly there, uh, suddenly Joyce became equal in mandatory position to, to Yusik, who's been there for a very long time as a number one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Suddenly got equalized. I had similar situation with Tony Bailey and Myers Bredis, but I forced Matrum to surrender the belt because we find the resolution with Tony Bailey being progressed to. Um, not franchise. What was before? What what is this honorary one? What remind me the not in recess the honor on honorary one. There's a word for that. Emirates. He lost. Emirates champion. And then Bredis was number one contender now for the vacant title WBC, and we pick Marco Hook. That's what we did. So, but Fury and Joshua is such a huge fight that I know. WBO had a massive dilemma and big choice to make. Uh, do they want to be difficult and abstract here? But really, in my opinion, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, and Bob Arum should have found the money and paid Alexander Yusik a step aside fee. That's what they should have done. But I don't want to expand that. I'm sure financially it's better and more viable to sway WBO, they pay you. I leave it right here, answering to this question. We'll leave the end of that open to interpretation, of course. Exactly, whatever it is. Uh, do you think then that Alex Krasiuk, Alexander Usyk, and Co. will take that Joyce fight, or do you think they're going to fight this? Listen, the message is out there. The fight is happening. Usyk been brushed to the curb. Probably all he needs to focus now is on Joyce. They would fight, but potentially they will lose that battle because I can just smell it. I'll just one more thing from me before I let you go. No problem, uh, brother. A couple old flames keep popping up again. Amir Khan and Kel Brook back in the news. Uh, it's It's gone on for a long time now, but... They're talking about it again. Do you still have an interest in seeing that fight? A lot of people are saying it's past its sell-by date, but they'd still watch it. Yeah, we still watch it, man. We watch Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson fighting against um, Roy Jones. Come on, man. We watched uh, KSI against Logan Paul. We watched so much SH. I mean, I'm talking, not being disrespectful. I mean, look, Mike Tyson, when did he finish his career? A long time ago. Long time ago. Same as Roy Jones, correct? That fight sold millions. I mean, we just out of principle, we want to see that fight. Amir Khan against Kilbrook. I just out of principle. I do fancy Kilbrook still, though, very firmly. I think he's too strong and too big for Amir Khan. But again, man, it's just pointless. Let's see if that happens. He's just like... 
know what I mean? He's like someone, he's drooling over Angelina Jolie and getting that chance when she's 60 years of age. <laughs> this is my comparison to you, do you know what I mean? <laughs> he can still put that mark on his resume. I had it, but it's not the same. <laughs> well, Al Siesta, I don't think we're going to have a better note to sign off on. So thank you so much for your time, Al. It's nice to catch up with you. I'm sure we'll speak to you again very soon. My brother, thank you so much, man. Always pleasure talking to you.